Here's a small hive beetle. This hive beetle is currently stuck in a Swiffer sheet. It is one of the methods that many beekeepers use to uh, reduce the population of small hive beetles. If the population isn't kept in check, they can wreak havoc in hives. A small hive beetle will eat brood, they eat uh, and destroy comb, they destroy pollen stores, and they eat the, the food that the bees feed the brood. One small hive beetle can lay between, I think it's a thousand to two thousand eggs in her lifetime, something like that. So you can see how they can get out of control quickly. If one of these lays a thousand eggs and all those thousand make it, now you have a thousand times a thousand pretty quickly. So these small hive beetles, their life cycle starts as an egg. That egg is laid by the mother hive beetle in pollen or bee bread or next to a uh, brood. And then that egg takes I believe it's three to five days to hatch. Once it hatches, it takes, I think, seven to ten days for the larva to mature. Once they mature, they will crawl out of the hive. They'll drop out of the entrance, they'll crawl out of the entrance of the hive, and they'll drop to the ground. When they drop to the ground, they start looking for a suitable place to pupate and usually it's right under the hive, but it can be between 15 and 25 feet away from the hive. After that, I believe they can pupate for 30 days in the summer. I'm not sure with the winter how that works, but um, they pupate and then they crawl back to the hive or they fly back to the hive and they start the life cycle over. They start looking for a place to lay eggs. Beekeepers, try and reduce the population as much as possible. In certain states like Alabama and Georgia, the southern states, their population isn't interrupted by a long cold winter like it is in Michigan. So their populations can get out of control and you'll see it on, on forums and, and stuff like that. They call it a slime out where there's so many larvae in the hive that the frames are completely slimy with um, with larva excrement and um, it, it stinks, it looks really bad and it, it destroys a, a hive and the, when it gets to that point the bees will um, sometimes leave the hive if it gets that bad. So the best cure is prevention. You want to prevent um, the hive beetle population from expanding and one of the ways of doing that is trapping them. It's a good idea to have some kind of trapping mechanism in the hive at all times. What I personally use, I use Swiffer sheets and unfortunately bees do get snagged in it. I'll try and rescue some of them later but that is a drawback of Swiffer sheets. Sometimes bees do get tangled in it and they die but the idea behind a Swiffer sheet is the hive beetles when they're in the hive they try and hide from the bees because the bees will chase the high beetles around. They're not, um, high beetles are shaped in a way where it's difficult for the bees to, they can't sting them, they can't bite them. Um, it, it's hard for the bees to control them. What you do is you just take an unscented Swiffer sheet, a dry unscented Swiffer sheet, and you lay it at the top of the hive where there's not a lot of bees. That's where the high beetles are gonna tend to congregate on the ends of the frames, next to the edge of the hive, that kind of thing. You put it there and the hive beetles will try and escape from the bees and in so doing, they'll go to the Swiffer sheets. They'll try and burrow into the Swiffer sheets and when they do that, they get tangled in the Swiffer sheet fibers and then they're no longer able to get out. And you can see how effective it is. The hive beetles will burrow in here and then they end up dying. I'm not sure how long it takes them to die, but I've, I pull out Swiffer sheets a lot and I found I find ones that are alive and I end up killing those just to make sure they don't escape somehow. When you first put a Swiffer sheet in there, it's going to be pretty flat, but as the bees try to remove it, they pull at the fibers and it gets, um, it gets very rough. And you can actually take the Swiffer sheets and roughen it up before you put it in the hive. That'll help 
the hide beetles get tangled in it. And you can leave this in here quite a while. But as you can see, the bees don't like it, so they start putting a lot of propolis on it. So what the bees do is they chase them around, chase them around, until the hive beetles go into a crevice or a crack. As an example, under the uh, top cover, a lot of times you'll find hive beetles between the top cover and the inner cover, because the hive beetles, they'll, they'll find a crevice between the inner cover and the, high, and the top cover, something like this. And it's big enough for a high beetle to fit under, but it's not big enough for a bee to fit under. And eventually the bees will probably propolis this, but what they'll do is they'll drive the high beetles into these crevices. The high beetles will sit there and the bees will continue to guard that high beetle. They'll do like a 24-7 cycle of guarding the hive beetles and preventing them from coming out. And the high beetles have adapted so that they actually get the bees to feed them while they're in their jails. Uh, they, um, they will go up to the bees and touch their, I think it's their mandibles, and they'll get them to excrete nectar, and the high beetles will eat that. So it's a very fascinating way the high beetles survive, they actually get the bees to take care of them. So the high beetles can sit in those jails for quite a long time and just kind of wait it out until the hive gets weak enough where they can get out and crawl around. So one of the ways that beekeepers take advantage of that behavior of them going and hiding in crevices is by using traps such as a beetle blaster. This is a beetle blaster. And what happens is the beetles will run away from the bees, run away from the bees, and the bees will chase them. And the beetles will go down in these crevices in the beetle blaster. And they'll go down and they'll be able to sit in this area so they get away from the bees. But what happens is if you put oil in here, you can just put vegetable oil, the beetles will crawl down in there and then they'll fall in the oil and they'll drown. The beetle blaster is a very popular tool. One of the things that can increase a hive beetle population is pollen patties. If you put pollen patties on the hive during the summer, what will happen is the hive beetles will lay their eggs on the pollen substitute and the hive beetle larva will be able to burrow into that substitute and they'll be safe from the bees and they'll make it. And a lot of them will um, survive and uh, get out of the hive and start the life cycle over again. So if you're using pollen substitute, you have to be really careful that you don't increase the hive beetle population. So what you should do is only put a limited amount of mm -hmm. pollen sub in, um, enough for them to have a few days worth if you're going to do it in the summer or some people even say only 24 hours worth. Just enough to kind of boost the bees, but not enough for the high beetles to have somewhere to uh, reproduce a lot. Now what I did was I put the Swiffer sheets on top of the pollen sub. It tangled up a lot of the high beetles as they were trying to access it. So I put the pollen sub in the hive and I put the Swiffer sheet on top. When the high beetles tried to get in here to lay eggs, they had to deal with the Swiffer sheets and a lot of them got trapped in there. So that was a way that I took the risk of feeding them in the summer because I really wanted to boost the population for the winter, but um, I reduced the risk of the high beetles by doing it that way. So seems like it worked out pretty well. I, I saw a YouTuber doing that and uh, I figured I would follow suit and do the same thing. But there are also other ways of of dealing with high beetles. There's a variety of different traps and I'll put some pictures up in the video and and show you some of those different options. And then another way you can treat for high beetles is by actually treating the ground. So what you can do, and I should really do it, is put rock salt or diatomaceous earth underneath the entrances of the hive. So when the high beetles fall out or the high beetle larvae fall out to find a place to pupate, they have to crawl through that diatomaceous earth and the, or the rock salt. 
and that will kill them. That's how you would treat for high beetles and keep the population in check.